Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the review of yesterday's games. And yes, I am from Austria and yes, I'm wearing a Dutch jersey. Uh, partly because my Denmark jersey, the, the short sleeve hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> and I'm not gonna put on in this heat a uh, long sleeve. But also, um, the Dutch are through. The Dutch have always been one of my favorite teams, so uh, what better reason to wear this one, even though they beat my home country, which, as you know, I'm not all that supportive of, and we'll talk about that one as well. However, I want to start with the game that I couldn't see yesterday, and I tried to soak up as much information as I could about it, um, because it was not only one of the best games in this competition so far, so adding salt in the wound of not being able to see, see this one, but definitely the most emotional, and I'm talking, of course, about Denmark against Belgium. Uh, the mood in Copenhagen, this was probably, again, I have not seen, <laughs> everything with a good atmosphere I have not seen, I have, I have, I have seen the Hungary Portugal game, and spoiler alert, I won't be able to see at least one game tomorrow as well, so yeah, great, we'll make it, life, life. Life sometimes is more important than watching soccer, although it always hurts me a little bit. Um, in any case, the atmosphere was amazing, the build-up, it was so emotional, and you were wondering what will uh, Denmark do without Eriksen. Well, press the life out of Belgium. I mean, right from the get-go, Denmark was all over uh, Belgium, and Paulsen scored after 99 seconds. I mean, the eruption there... Even if I haven't seen it live, uh, when I just see the replays, it was an amazing uh, atmosphere there. Then, of course, at the tent, the tent is is uh, a referee, Kuipas, took it upon himself to stop the game. I mean, this was agreed on before. Number 10, of course, Ericsson's number. And uh, everyone standing there, uh, banners held up. Amazing, absolutely amazing scenes. I would have loved to see a shot of Ericsson in the hospital, but, you know, I know. It's probably asking a little bit too much, uh, given his condition. And Denmark, really, for 20, 20, 20 minutes, was definitely the better team. And you kind of wonder what would have happened if there would have been a second goal for them. I think this would have probably have uh, helped them uh, big time, but uh, unfortunately... It did not come. Oh, Belgium reacted and took off Mertens and brought on Mertens and brought on De Bruyne. And that kind of changed the game because uh, De Bruyne really is one that, you know, this uh, free spirit who can see passes make. By, he is, spoiler alert, he's one of my favorite players at the moment. Uh, if he is on, it is a lot of fun to watch him. And uh, the way he already says set up the, first, the equalizer for Denmark, uh, uh, Belgium, I'm getting ahead of myself. In the 50th, no, not even ahead, whatever. In the 55th uh, for Torgen Azar, I mean, it is not that the pass was that hard, but being having the vision of seeing that Azar is free, that is uh, the special power that uh, De Bruyne brings. Of course, Lukaku was also very um, essential in the build-up. Also, I think with De Bruyne, Kier, who did an outstanding job against Lukaku in the first half, um, now he had to kind of worry about De Bruyne as well, and the, 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 the Danish defense couldn't deal with it all that well. And so it was honestly only a matter of time until uh, De Bruyne scores the second one uh, and turns the game around. And with his weaker left foot, he takes a really great shot. Then Denmark had chances to equal. I think Brethwit uh, headed it onto the bar and so on. And I think everyone except the Belgian fans will probably have hoped that uh, Denmark gets a point out there. I personally definitely did so. And they probably would have deserved a point out, 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 out of there. However, um, given how the group is standing, I mean, yes, Belgium, and we'll look at this uh, after we talk about the other Belgium has now won the group. Uh, so I don't know what they will do against Finland, but I still would fancy them or to win over Finland, then uh, win over Russia, uh, especially by two, two goals is enough for Denmark to qualify. Uh, two goals difference is what they needed. And the way Denmark is playing, I definitely can see them beating Russia uh, resoundingly. Let's go to Group C. Uh, of course, I saw both Group C games, although they were not as in interesting as uh, this Denmark-Belgium game. I, I, 
Interestingly, uh, Argentine ref referee was uh, refereeing between the Ukraine and North Macedonia. That came a little bit out, out, out of blue, and I, I have not seen the refereeing list uh, for the Euro, so I got to admit to that. Jersey matchup, really nice, I have to say. Um, like that, uh, like that one. Um, and Ukraine, after a few minutes, was definitely the better team in the first half. Uh, having chances, creating chances, and then once they scored, I thought this is going to be a rout, uh, which, you know, part of me thinking for Austria, yeah, um, maybe it's better to not, uh, maybe it would be nice if that game stays closed because goal difference could come into play. But on the other side, the 2 nil they have was fully deserved. Yarmolenko uh, after a Karavaev pass from a very acute angle. I mean, it, again, the goalkeeper didn't look good. The liner goal in the first uh, game was similar. Uh, and then Yaremchuk wonderfully played uh, at attack uh, and Yarmolenko assisting that one. And like against the Netherlands, first Yarmolenko, then Yaremchuk scoring the goals. 2 nil, and I thought it had three or whatever in there. However, in the second half, uh, Northern Macedonia got themselves really back into the game, uh, dug in, fought, 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 and they earned a penalty, which I can see why people are not happy, but I have seen this now in the uh, watching soccer way too often that, yeah, if you hit the player, even if he comes from the back and you have no idea he's coming there, it will be given a penalty. And then Alioski steps out, the penalty is safe, but on the rebound he can pull, pull, pull it in. Um, I'm starting to wonder, I mean, uh, up until that point only Ronaldo had converted the penalty. Uh, what's happening? And it got even worse because despite uh, Northern Macedonia having then uh, pressure, not many great, great, great men, but I think it was an overall and, and entertaining game. The Ukraine earn a uh, penalty because Avramovsky has uh, on a freaky from Malinovsky the hand too high. <laughs> Again, protection. I honestly think uh, this is instinct. This is not on purpose. Uh, yeah, the hand is too high and he turns away. So again, I can't understand the ruling, but it doesn't make much sense. Penalty is saved. At that point, I think we had four missed penal penalties and only one converted in the tournament so far. Which... <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I, aren't you supposed to score penalties? No, absolutely not. So yeah, <laughs> uh, Ukraine end up two one winners despite all the Macedon efforts to get a point out, out, out there. As I said, one part of me wanted to have it, and the other, the other part, yeah. I think you gotta see the fair result. And uh, Macedon wasn't hoping that in Austria would get something against the Netherlands, otherwise they will be eliminated. Of course, Austria. Uh, uh, <sighs> Best thing I can say, Austria tried. Uh, I think up until they reached uh, the, f the, f the attacking third, I think they looked overall all right. But you know, um, we have this uh, brave, you know, nice, nice, but nothing convincing. And I still don't get the lineup, I still don't get the tactics. Uh, it is just uh, not fish, no foul. No, no foul. It is just not happening. It's just not happening. This is a team that could... And I know this sounds crazy, but this is a team that really could play well. The only redeeming thing, and that's why I guess I'm not as harsh on Austria, is because they finally played in all black and see how that actually looks nice. Then this jersey, uh, I really don't think it's that bad. This actually makes some sort of sense. To me, so I really actually enjoyed this uh, orange against black um, uh, ma uh, mat matchup. Uh, of course, I think in the first 10 minutes, Austria really uh, tried to actually be active, and then Alaba mishandles the ball in the box, tries to make something up, and steps on them, Dumfries. And it's a penalty, clear cut penalty, that Memphis Depay is converting. Um, and more or less, that settled the game because. Uh, Austria, while hanging in there and fighting a lot, um, they had no, there was no danger coming from them. Uh, this is pretty appalling, I have to say. And I come back to, I mean, yes, Italy is a high standard, but when you see an Italy attack, 
the players know exactly which uh, spaces to run into, who will be there, making triangles left and right, the Dutch doing something very similar. Although I think I still think that their uh, up setup is not all that great, but uh, they're doing similar, similar stuff. With Austria, I don't feel that. It's, I have the ball and then I have to look, there is no... Um, you know, nothing that, no work on the training pitch, uh, trains attacking patterns, it seems. Defensively, it looks overall all right, but you know, you're getting quickly called out and, uh, you know, uh, Memphis Depay should have made it uh, two uh, before the half. Uh, second half, for all, I mean, possession kept level, but again, it's more chances to the Netherlands. They fry with a header that Bachmann saves and almost an own goal. And then you have a high line, and if you have a high line, at least stay on the same line. No, Hinteregger. I think Hinteregger is a really good defender, but he is so lax. You have to stay on the same line. He, there is no, uh, he doesn't put Marlon into the offside, and Marlon finds Dumfries on the other side. And Dumfries was now kind of involved in all five of the Dutch goals to make it 2 0. Um, was there a chance for Austria? Maybe there was a little one, but not really. And this is the appalling uh, showing it. And I hate the narrative already in Austria. Uh, a Arnauto, which was missing, and what uh, blah 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 blah. I'm sorry if uh, it was. I even think that the, the comparison with the double eagle from the uh, Swiss at the World Cup. That was a political statement. I think what Arnautovic said was a derogatory uh, statement, where you are insulting someone based on nationality kind of going into racism so i actually understand that even although i think not many in austria do understand this and then an out which response i found rather appalling as well um which is the classic yeah okay i think he's a good guy he didn't mean to do anything uh bad there but you know you could have handled that better and then don't make this the third the, the, the prime excuse for austria uh to not do anything because it is not only down to another which yes he can uh do something he has the inspiration here and there but no it's not you don't need the, the dutch are a clearly better team and they're not even great uh, greatly coached uh, it was not a entertaining game overall but you know what can i say uh and the other thing that i don't, don't like a narrative yeah we were fighting we were like the, the, the again we just couldn't get it done uh because the dutch are better no I really think that this team has every opportunity to hurt this Dutch team. And it's down to coaching. But, you know, uh, it's a lot about the narrative. As I said, let's look at the uh, standings. Uh, Belgium is through to the next round. And I think even as group winners, I think you cannot uh, they beat Russia. Nah, Finland can actually uh, take, take them from first place. Yes, uh, it's still possible. But uh, Belgium is through to the next round, as are the Netherlands. So both the low countries are through. Uh, Ukraine and Austria play for second and third, and North Macedonia is out. And I think a draw will probably suit them both, but Austria probably will, you know, it, it depends. I mean, we'll see now uh, the three in a sec. Probably doesn't really matter whether you sec second or, thir or third, so maybe a draw um, might see both of them through. And then it's just who do you prefer to play? Um, as at, at the moment, Austria even leads the third place standings. However, as I said, with only half the groups having had two games, there's not much you can say about that one. So let's look at projected stand standings, where again, Ukraine now is ahead of Austria. You see already the chances 67% that they will finish in second over Austria with 33. Um, and also, Denmark and Russia looking all not all that bad. I mean, there is the point that. Um, Belgium cannot save players and Finland probably has a chance to pick up a point which will put them um, on four points and rather good and then Denmark really needs to just a win over Russia to finish third and then hope that three points is enough which it might not be so um, a tricky spot I think Denmark definitely uh, should go for uh, needs to win by two clear goals uh, to have a chance of advancing 
there. As for third place teams, Austria leads that category now uh, over Sweden, um, Germany and Croatia, Finland and Switzerland on the outside looking in. Um, again, doesn't really take things out that probably Belgium will play a uh, second string squad in the last group game, which still will be a very talented squad. So uh, it might as well be that uh, Belgium wins out in this group. However, as it sets up the tree, um, as I said, uh, for Austria, I mean, the third place can, it really depends on, on the other goals, but you know, if you finish third in the group and you're among the best fourth at the moment, you will play either Belgium, you will play France, you will play Spain, uh, and you cannot really play the Netherlands. So um, take your poison. I guess Spain might look uh, no lot even that. So, uh, and if you finish second, you play against Italy. So uh, either way, I think it doesn't really matter for Ukraine and Austria uh, how you finish because you will play um, again one against one of the tournament favorites. Uh, a, the only thing is if Italy manages really sees okay maybe it's better to finish second because then you have such a sweet uh, you have a really sweet uh, draw there although Portugal could be spilled into uh, the Netherlands path there. Um, as for overall favorites yes with Belgium now winning this actually hurt Italy's chances because Italy is also on track to finish first and they are um, there's a clash happening, so uh, that hurt them a little bit, and so poor Portugal goes ahead, ahead, ahead of Italy. Uh, Denmark is not dropping because, yes, uh, qual qualifier is still more than a 50% chance, um, but, you know, a few pieces need to fall into place for them. Um, so that benefits got Germany, Wales, and the Czechs. Uh, as I said, Ukraine now slightly ahead of Austria. Austria are the, are, are the top 13. And uh, that's basically where it is. And then uh, today's matchups. I think up until the evening it might not be the craziest one. But although I think it's Croatia Czech Republic matchup is an interesting one. Sweden Slovakia. Yeah, we gotta see. I yeah, I might jump into the pool uh, and miss that one too. So let's see. I'm gonna miss a few games, and I'm not too happy happy about it. England Scotland, of course. I think everyone is talking about that one. The oldest uh, rivalry in international soccer and of course it's the highlights, although I don't expect uh, as much as I would hope for a good uh, game, I actually think that England is too much to handle for Scotland. That was it for me for today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Please drop a line what you thought about the games uh, yesterday. I really would like to hear even your perspective on Austria because, you know, I hear the one thing. Yeah, we have been so great, great fighters. I, I actually think the, the international re response will be a rather scathing of Austria as I tend to look at things. In any case, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.